This Torah portion here is Shalat. And uh, <clears throat> they say that means sent ones, just like the apostles mean Sheliot and words like that that I heard during the week. And uh, we're going to get into it and maybe look at it a little bit different than I look, listen to a lot of people during the week. They, they all kind of go with the names and what the names mean and go into the giants and all that kind of stuff. But uh, <clears throat> going to look at it from a slightly different angle. Uh, but first I would like to give Yah his glory with the psalm. So I'm going to, I'm not quite familiar with this Bible. I'm using it because it is a large print. And my eyes are getting dim as I get old. So I'd like to go to Psalm number 29. So we can ascribe some glory to Yah. Psalm 29, the Psalm of David. Give unto Yah, all you mighty. Give unto Yah glory and strength. Give unto Yah the glory due to his name. Worship Yah in the beauty of holiness. The voice of Yah is upon the waters. The El of glory thundereth. Yah is upon many waters. The voice of Yah is powerful. The voice of Yah is full of majesty. The voice of Yah breaketh the cedars. Yea, the voice of Yah breaketh the cedars of Lebanon. He maketh them also to skip like a calf. Lebanon and Syrian like the young ox. The voice of Yah divideth the flames of fire. The voice of Yah shaketh the wilderness. Voice of Yah shaketh the wilderness of Kadesh. That's where we're going to be in today's portion. The voice of Yah maketh the hinds to calf and discovereth the forest. And in this temple doth everyone speak of his glory. Yah sitteth upon the flood, yea, Yah sitteth king forever. Yah will give strength unto his people. Yah will bless his people with shalom. Amen. This is the Yah whom we serve. That even his voice will do these many wonders. So we go to our Torah portion, Shalak. And it says, Sin for you, or sin for yourself. Tour the land. I asked uh, if they could find a meandering river, maybe, and put it up on the screen here. But that's what the people were told to do. Go on and tour the land. So we're going to check out the, the word tour, because it's used throughout this portion. It's the Hebrew number 8446, tour. Just like we take a tour. It means to meander about, search out, seek. And the last one is spy out. And that's what you, most people usually talk about, that they went to spy out the land. But that, that's kind of like the last meaning of it there. It's really like you're taking a tour to go in and out of. What we're looking at is compared to the Hebrew number 7270, Ragal. That's to reconnoiter also. But it also means to be a tailbearer. That is to slander, to lead about, to backbite, to search, and to spy out also. This is the word, like when Joseph was in Egypt and his brothers came to him, that's what he told them they were there to do, to spy out the land in this manner. That they were a bunch of backbiters and tailbearers and they come out to do harm to the land. They were told up, up in this portion here to tour the land, just to go out and check it out basically. Not to bring back an evil report. So it would seem that they did not understand the mission they were on. So let's uh, let's read in Numbers. I'm going to start in Numbers 13:25. And they returned from searching out the land after 40 days, and they went and came to Moses and to Aaron 
and to all the children of the congregation of the Israel, unto the wilderness of Paran, to Kadesh, where is that Kadesh that we read in the psalm, and brought back word unto them, unto all the congregation, and showed them the fruit of the land. And they told him and said, We came unto the land whither thou sent us, and surely it floweth with milk and honey. And this is the fruit of it. Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land, and the cities are walled and very great. And moreover, we've seen the children of Anak there. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south, and the Hittites, and the Jebusites, and the Amorites, they dwell in the mountains, and the Canaanites, they dwell on the sea and by the coast of the Jordan. And Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. But the men that went up with him said, We be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. And they brought up an evil report of the land, which they had searched under the children of Israel, saying, The land through which we have gone to search it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof. And all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature. And there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, which come of the giants. And we were in our own sight as grasshoppers. And so we were, and so we were in their sight. And all the congregation lifted up their voice and cried, and the people wept that night. And all the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron, and the whole congregation said unto them, Would God that we had died in the land of Egypt, or would God that we had died in this wilderness? I listened to a few people that know Hebrew, or they claim to know Hebrew. They speak it, which I don't, but they said it here in verse 31. What it really says is, not that we be not able to go up against the people, but that he is not able. That one that has the voice that could break cedars, shatter rocks, make animals burst, make people say, you talk to them, <laughs> or we're going to die. We had a pillar of cloud and fire, and now they're saying, this one's not able. So they asked that maybe it was better if they died in this wilderness or in Egypt. So let's jump to Numbers 14, 28. This is Yah speaking. He says, Okay, say unto them, As truly as I live, saith Yah, as ye have spoken in mine ears, so I will do to you. Kind of tells us the things we speak. You know, everybody says words have meaning, they have power. Here he's telling them, as you have spoken, you ask for it, you're going to get it. Your carcasses shall fall in the wilderness, and all that were numbered of you, according to your whole number, from 20 years old and upward, which have murmured against me. Doubtless ye shall not come into the land concerning which I swear to make you dwell therein, save Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, and Joshua, the son of Nun. But your little ones, which you said should be a prey, them will I bring in, and they shall know the land which you have despised. But as for you, your carcasses shall fall in this wilderness, and your children shall shall wander in the wilderness forty years and bear your whoredoms until your carcasses be wasted in the wilderness. I don't want you to keep that in mind, what was just said right there. It says bury your whoredoms, but it also has a, a meaning in the Hebrew of lift your whoredoms. But he's telling there that the, the children are going to suffer also and he goes down here, and, and I'll read 34. And after the number of the days which he shirts the land, 
even 40 years. Each day for a year shall you bear your iniquity, even 40 years, and you shall know my breach of promise. So here he's telling them that as you have spoken, so I'm going to do to you. You'll also know because of your iniquities and your whoredoms that I'm going to void my promise to you. Everyone that was numbered from 20 years and up. And I kind of had this thing where I thought it was just a touch of the Spirit. We always say, how many entered in the land? And we say, oh, there was two. And that's true, but that's of those that were numbered. I felt that the Holy Spirit kind of nudged me and said, you know, remember Eliezer. Eliezer was here at this time. And he's the third one by name who entered into the promise. And Eliezer, of course, took the high priest position. So Yah already showed that he would go before them and fight for them. He told them that in previous chapters. All they had to do is obey his voice. They decided not to obey his voice. So with that, I want to jump to Deuteronomy 119. Coming at the end of like 38 years later, they've basically been dwelling in the same area for 38 years. And there's not much told about what goes on in that period of time, but there's a few things like uh, like the picking up the sticks that's in this portion, what Korah did, and uh, a few other things. <clears throat> but really, there's not much told on, on the wandering years. But we come to the end of that, and in Deuteronomy 1, 19, Moses kind of recalls and gives a little more insight to what went on back there in Kadesh. And when we departed from Horeb, we went through all that great and terrible wilderness which you saw by the way of the mountain of the Amorites as Yah, our El, commanded us. And we came to Kadesh, Barnea. Later on, we'll see that there's text on this Barnea. We'll, we'll get into that a little bit. And I said to you, you are come unto the mountain of the Amorites, which Yah, our El, doth give unto us. Behold, Yah, thy Elohim, hath set the land before thee. Go up and possess it, as Yah, Elohim of thy fathers has said unto thee, Fear not, neither be discouraged. And ye came near me, unto me, every one of you, and said, We shall send men before us, the people that ask. It sounded almost like Moses did back in Numbers. And they shall search for us the land, and bring us word again by what way we must go up, and unto what cities we shall come. The Yah that was leading them. They want to go up and search the land on their own. And the saying pleased me well. And I took twelve men of you, one of a tribe. And they turned and went up into the mountain and came to the valley of Eshcol and searched it out. And they took of the fruit of the land in their hands and brought it down to us and brought us word again and said, It is a good land which Yah, our Elohim, doth give us. Notwithstanding, ye would not go up but rebelled against the commandment of Yah, your Elohim. And you murmured in your tents and said, Because Yah hated us, He hath brought us forth out of the land of Egypt to deliver us into the hand of the Amorites to destroy us. Whither shall we go up? Our brethren have discouraged our hearts, saying, The people is greater and taller than we. The cities are great and walled up to heaven. And moreover, we have seen the son of the Anakims there. Then I said to you, Dread not, neither be afraid of them. Yah, your Elohim, which goeth before you, he shall fight for you, according to all that he did for you in Egypt before your eyes. And in the wilderness where you have seen how that Yah, your Elohim, bare thee as a man doth bear his son. And all the way that you went until you came to this place. Yet in this thing you did not believe, Yah, your Elohim, who went in the way before you to search out a place to pitch your tents in, and fire by night to show you by what way you should go, and a cloud by day. 
He already said he'd go before them, and he went before them. And he also said he would fight with them. But it was said back here, because Yah hated us. Hated us. <laughs> That's why he brought us out. That's why he's bringing us now to, out of our own misery and confusion and all of our afflictions, because he hates us. Go to Deuteronomy. I'm going to read a couple short verses in Deuteronomy here. Uh, Deuteronomy 7, 6 through 9. For thou art an holy people unto Yah thy Elohim. Yah thy Elohim hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself, above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Yah did not set his love upon you, nor choose you because you were more in number than any people, for you were the fewest of all people. But because Yah loved you, and because He would keep the oath which He had sworn unto your fathers, hath Yah brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you out of the house of bondage from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Know therefore that Yah the Elohim, He is El, a faithful El, which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love Him and keep His commandments to a thousand generations. Deuteronomy 23.5 Nevertheless, Yah the Elohim would not hearken unto Balaam when he tried to bring a curse on the people. But Yah the Elohim turned the curse into a blessing unto thee because Yah the Elohim loved thee. Deuteronomy 33.1-3 And this is the blessing wherewith Moses, the man of El, blessed the children of Israel before his death. And he said, Yah came up from Sinai and rose up from Seir unto them. He shined forth from Mount Paran and he came with ten thousands of saints. From his right hand went a fiery Torah for them. Yea, he loved the people, all his saints are in thy hand, and they set down at thy feet. Everyone shall receive of thy words. He says over and over he's doing these things because he loved the people. Our people, murmurers, complainers, thinking he's here to do us evil and not good. So let's look at some things here. Yeah, that's kind of a meandering river. I've seen some that, like when you tour the land, it really goes like that, you know, don't rush straight through. That's what it means to meander or go through a land, go through tour like that. Let's look at Kadesh. Kadesh may not be Kadosh. We got these, and, and sometimes I don't agree with vowel points and what they make the words to say. They're spelled the same way and all that. But Kadesh may not be Kadosh. We know Kadosh in Hebrew is holy, the holy one of Israel, but Kadesh is very close. And I have a Holman dictionary, a Smith's Bible dictionary, and an Elson's, and they all tag it as holy and consecrated, and they kind of leave it at that and explain the wilderness area with it. When you look up to Strong's and what's in the King James and key to that strong, it does say the same thing. That it's holy and consecrated. But it's not Kadosh. It's Kadesh. And it comes from another word. I think it's Kadash if I had to look it up. But it's 6946. It comes right from 6945 having the meaning of a quasi-sacred person. It even has words like being a male devotee to licentious idolatry, a sodomite, unclean. This is the place where they pretty much dwelt for 39 years because they 
kept refusing to obey the voice. So it has a form of godliness. But the real holy place was Kadosh, inside the land, which they did not want to go up into. And then that word Bernay is easily translated. It was not just a wilderness of wandering, as most people put it. Bar, you know, can either be seed, but it also means son. Nea comes from Nua, which means to wander. It also means to waver. Sons of wavering can easily be translated that way. So they're in a quasi sacred place outside the land, and they're sons of wavering. There you go. That's that's a very meandering river there. If you go in and out of the land, checking everything out, not just rushing through it. And bring back after you've gone through the land, come back and bring back a good report. Quasi sacred. When you look it up in the American Heritage Dictionary, that's the one I use. It has words like sort of. Resembling, but not being. To some degree. Almost. Or somewhat. I'll be the first to raise my hand. And I'll be 20 years old a long time ago. And that's when you're really numbered as being supposedly a man. And they're in the wilderness 40 years. That's almost a man's life. And they're dwelling in this quasi-sacred place. I think we're kind of all going through that. And we want to be holy. want to do that first song that Joshua played. If the stars in all creation obey his voice, so will I. Well, if only I could. want to. But I, I heard one guy say one time, all of creation does what it was created to do. But man, I kind of agree with that. All the animals do exactly what they were created. Luminaries, planets, everything obeys his voice. The waters can only go so far. When he decides to use them, whether for blessing, judgment, or whatever, they obey his voice. Everything but man. So we're in this wilderness. <coughs> One over here. I wanted. We're in this wilderness. We're almost or somewhat sacred. Kind of denying his power. So <clears throat> I want to jump up to the New Testament. First Timothy. I'm going to meander through the scriptures a little too here. First Timothy three one through five. I exhort. Ver- Wrong one. 1 Timothy 3, 1 through 5. This is a true saying. 2 Timothy. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. You start reading it and say, no, that don't sound right. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, Goose breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, petty, high minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. This is really why I came here, verse 5. Having a form of godliness, quasi holy. Having a form of godliness, but denying the actual power. Thereof, from such, turn away. Now I gotta admit, all these things we read back in these scriptures, I've never seen. Never seen a sea part. People walk through, plagues coming down on a people, judging all these gods, pillars of fire leading me. Haven't seen it. Haven't seen manna. Haven't ate manna. We can go on and on. 
but I still say he is the powerful one. Remember that power of his voice from that psalm. Just his voice can do for us. A quasi sacred person, you might hear something like this. And we're going to go to Amos 5.21. This is what anybody might hear from Yah. I hate. I despise your feast days. And then I, I will not smell in your solemn assemblies. Though you offer me burnt offerings and your meat offerings, I will not accept them. Neither will I regard the peace offerings of your fat beasts. Take thou away from me the noise of thy songs, for I will not hear the melody of thy vials. But let judgment run down as waters and righteousness as a mighty stream. Have ye offered unto me sacrifices and offerings in the wilderness forty years, O house of Israel? But ye have borne the tabernacle of your Moloch, and Kiun, your images, the star of your God, which you made for yourselves. This is taking you all the way back from the minor prophets to the wilderness. Where he's telling them, did you really worship me all that time? He's telling them, telling us, it was idolatry there the whole time. You want to see a second witness in the New Testament? Book of Acts. Stephen trying to persuade the people that Joshua is the Messiah. Pick it up in uh, chapter 7, verse 41. He starts talking about some of the same things. This is at Horeb where he starts off. And they made a calf in those days and offered sacrifice unto the idol and rejoiced in the works of their own hands. Then God turned and gave them up to worship the host of heaven. There's many places where God's going to give people what they want. He gave them over to worship the host of heaven here. Some of the commentaries on that actually say these are the Elohim that's always talking about throughout the scriptures. As it is written in the book of the prophets, O ye house of Israel, ye have offered to me slain beasts and sacrifices by the space of forty years in the wilderness. Yea, ye took up the tabernacle of Moloch, and the star of your God, Rimpham, figures which ye made to worship them. And I will carry you away to Babylon. Our fathers had the tabernacle of witness in the wilderness, as he had appointed, speaking unto Moses, that he should make it according to the fashion which he had seen, which also our fathers that came near after brought in with, which also our fathers that came after brought in with Jesus into the possession of the Gentiles, whom Elohim drave out before the face of our fathers until the days of David. That's that one place right there where I say there's a witness that Jesus. Joshua are the very same name. So why don't we just, if we're going to use English, why don't we just use Joshua? It says right there, which our fathers that came after brought in with Jesus. And that's talking about Joshua into the possession of the nations that were there before them unto the days of David. So you know it's not talking about the Jesus of the New Testament. It's talking about the Jesus back then, which was the figure and type of the one to come. As we looked at earlier, that the children, the children are the ones who are going to bear the whoredoms until the numbered suffer his breach of promise. Later on in the Torah portion, we're going to talk about the tassels. They're going to suffer the breach of promise, we're told. But we need to remember to look at our fringes as we're wandering around in this wilderness. We don't go 
do whoredoms before our Yah. That's why he gives them to us. That's what he says. So your eyes won't go chasing after the things your eyes go whoring after. We must know that we have a problem. Numbers 15.2. Back to that. As soon as he tells this evil generation, you're going to die in the wilderness. Then he states, when you come into the land, right back to the promise. Individuals may die, but his people is going to receive the promises. It may take thousands of years, which here we are. We're closer to the promise than any people have ever been that have been on the face of this earth. Today, which is the day of salvation, but we have to, uh, we have promises too that are before us, like they had promises back then. So let's take a tour of some of these promises. The first one I want to start off is in Jeremiah. And then go to Jeremiah 31. Jeremiah 31, and I'm going to start with verse 3. 3.12 Yah appeared of old under me saying, Yea, I have loved thee. He keeps telling us He loved me. With an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. Again I will build thee, and thou shalt be built, O virgin of Israel. Thou shalt again be adorned with thy tabrets and shall go forth in the dances of them that make merry. Thou shalt, thou shalt yet plant vines upon the mountains of Samaria. The planter shall plant and shall eat them as common things. For there shall be a day that the watchmen upon the Mount Ephraim shall cry, Arise ye, and let us go up to Zion unto the Lord, to Yah our Elohim. For thus saith Yah, Sing with gladness, Yaakov, and shout among the chief of the nations, publish ye, praise ye, and say, O Yah, save thy people, the remnant of Israel. Behold, I will bring them from the north, and gather them from the coast of the earth, and with them the blind and the lame, the woman with child, and her that travelleth with child together. A great company shall return thither, they shall come with weeping, and with supplications will I lead them. I will cause them to walk by the rivers in a straight way, wherein they shall not stumble. For I am a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. I personally think it's the scattered of Ephraim that have accepted Messiah. I think most people believe that. And they are the firstborn new creation, but not yet. And you know what I mean by that. I think you know what I mean by that. Not yet. We have the we've been ransomed. The price has been paid. We have the earnest of the spirit, but our body's still grown. There's still a new birth coming. Hear the word of Yah, O ye nations, and declare it in the isles afar off, and say. He that scattered Israel will gather him and keep him, as a shepherd doth his flock. For Yah hath redeemed Yaakov and ransomed him from the hand of him that was stronger than he. Therefore they shall come and sing in the height of Zion and shall flow together to the goodness of Yah for wheat, for wine, and for oil, and for the young of the flock and of the herd. And their soul shall be as a watered garden very soul will be as a watered garden. And they shall not sorrow anymore. Now I want to move on over to the New Testament for a couple of scriptures there. First one I want to go to is First uh, Corinthians. First Corinthians 2. These are the promises. We're actually told, I can't remember exactly where, that we have better promises than they have. That's just a land, right? 
We're talking about heavenly things, divine things, not just fleshly in the land. <clears throat> First Corinthians two nine. But as but as it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard. Neither have entered into the heart of man the things which Elohim hath prepared for them that love him. But Elohim hath revealed unto us by his Spirit, for the Spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of Elohim. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the Spirit of man which is in him? Even so, the things of Elohim knoweth no man, but the Spirit of Elohim. Now, have, now we have not received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of Elohim, that we may know the things that are freely given to us. Free gift of God. Which things also we speak not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Ruach HaKodesh teacheth. Comparing spiritual things to spiritual. I have not seen nor ear heard. If I remember right, that was a quote out of Isaiah. Yeah, Isaiah 64 4, he's quoting out of there. There's a second witness that there's things that are prepared that you can't even fathom. What you've seen there about the God of creation, all those things that are out there. Which Yahusha has created all things by His Word. And He has also inherited all things. And your joint heirs with Him. And what are you going to inherit? You're going to partake also in all things. Colossians. Three one. Colossians three one through four. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. For Mashiach sitteth on the right hand of Elohim. Set your affections on things above, not on things of the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in Elohim. When Mashiach, who is our life, shall appear, then we, then shall we also appear with him in glory. The promised glorified body. Not just a possession, an earthly possession on earth, but a glorified body. You can read a lot more about that. I believe it's in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 in the terrestrial, in the terrest celestial. But you are promised that you're going to appear as he does. You get a good description of that in the book of Revelation. His, his, his angels or ministers flames of fire. He's described in the same way that have eyes and flames of fire and burning legs and feet like brass. He walks through walls. Travels from here to there with no thought. Second Peter. One, one through four. Shimon Kifa. A bond servant and a sent one. He's a sent one like these ones that went in, but he's going to give you a good report. A sent one of Joshua, the Messiah, to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of Elohim and our Savior, Joshua, the Messiah. 
grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of Elohim and of Joshua, our Lord. Adon. According as His divine power. Not denying the power. He's talking about His divine power. Hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of Him that hath called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature. I feel a little bit of it sometimes. I feel the Spirit touch me and all that, but I don't think I've been anywhere close to being a partaker of the divine things yet that they're promised to come. Having escaped the corruption that is in this world through lust and through our flesh. So we give up that flesh, we're not going to see the true promise. Another one I want to talk about, this one's a little bit lengthy, but we, we still have a few minutes here. I want to go to Romans. Eight and starting with sixteen, I think I'm going to go through twenty-nine and thirty-nine. The Spirit, that's the Spirit of our Father itself, beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of Elohim. And if children, then heirs. Heirs of Elohim and join heirs with Christ, with Mashiach, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. For I reckon that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of Elohim. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who hath subjected the same in hope. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption unto the glorious liberty of the children of Elohim. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now and even until today. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit. We haven't partaken of the fruits of the resurrection. Christ, the first fruits. Some say those that came out of the graves back then were part of the first fruits, for Christ is a head, he has a body, so I kind of look, look at it that way. Those people are partakers of the barley harvest back then. First fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves grown within ourselves, waiting for the adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For we are saved by hope. The hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for it? So I say we haven't seen a lot of things they've seen. And they went in and they toured the land, they spied out the land, they searched the land, they've seen a lot of things there. Their hearts melted. One of the main things is those giants. That we've seen that voice of Yah that breaks rocks. It says somewhere else in the scriptures, the rock, the hammer, thy word is a hammer that breaks, the, shatters the rock into pieces. But they've seen these giants, and I believe they were actual giants myself. They're just flesh man. Still. His word is a hammer that shatters a rock in pieces. What well, can it do to a flesh man? Whether a little flesh man like me or a big old giant. But if we hope for that, we see not. Then we do with patience wait for it. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray as we ought. I do that a lot. I don't even know what to pray for 
kind of even get tired and weary, praying of the same thing, thy kingdom come. Let your name be sanctified. See, the earth just still keep going and going further into darkness and further away from Torah. But the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of Elohim. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love Elohim, to them who are called according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. What shall we say then to these things? If Elohim be for us, who can be against us? A lot of things that could take me out in this world. Like I said, I'm a little fresh flesh man. But I believe he has resurrection power. One day, I will, if I keep faith in Him, raised, actually raised from the dead. You know what the Hebrew children said when they were going to be tossed in the fire? We know He has power. I'm not going to bow to you even if we perish. He that spared not His own Son, but delivered Him up for us all. How shall we not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of Elohim's elect? It is Elohim the justifier. Who is he that condemneth? Is it Mashiach that died? Yea, rather that he is risen again. Who is even at the right hand of Elohim? Who also maketh intercession for us? Who shall separate us from the love of Mashiach? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword as it is written for thy sake we are killed all the day long we are accounted as sheep for the slaughter nay in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved for I am persuaded that neither death, well, that's a big giant there, neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of Elohim, which is in Mashiach, Yahusha, our Lord. Those are all pretty big giants. So a lot of giants. A bunch of giants. Death being one of the biggest ones. He promises later in the book of Revelation that death will be swallowed up in victory. One of the last things I believe that goes into the lake of fire and he's going to overcome death and it will be no more. There's a bunch of giants in Revelation too. And, and uh, I'm going to start wrapping it up here. So we read of dragons, multi-headed beasts, people getting their heads chopped off for the witness of Joshua the Messiah. People that take a mark and suffer many plagues. People that don't submit to this beast system and suffer many things also. That's some real scary stuff when you think about it. A lot of it probably symbolic. A pit's open. Things come out of it, it says, that hurt men five months. That are not sealed with the word of Yah. 
giants ahead of us. But he has promises for us also, and we've read a lot of them. So uh, I want to kind of wrap it up in Revelation 21. I'm going to start 21.1 and read through verse 7. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, Yochanan, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from Elohim out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of the heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of Elohim is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. And Elohim himself shall be with them and be their Elohim. And Elohim shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death. I see some young folks here. I see some ladies here. And I see some men here. But I imagine even you men in your life have cried a tear or two. Things that you just was willing to happen to you. Why did you have to go through that? not been an easy life for me. I could have wrote a much better story for myself. But it said all things work together for good to those who love him. So one day I'll find out, you know, what was all that for? <laughs> but anyway, he'll wipe away all tears and there shall be no more death. Neither sorrow nor crying. Neither shall there be any more pain for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am the Alpha and Omega, or the Aleph Tav, as we say in old the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. A free gift. He that overcometh shall inherit all things. And I will be his Elohim and he shall be my son. You have to be overcomers though goes on to talk about people who won't enter in. Now if all sin is forgiven, and I believe it is, then you have a repentant heart and all that. It goes on to say, these people will not enter in. So even though we have the power, the things that were accomplished at the cross, we need to remember to keep striving to walk in righteousness, to obey His commandments, Show him we love him by trying to do that. And then we also have that intercessor who has paid the price where we fall short. What a wonderful promise as we took a small tour. That is good report, those promises. We may not be able to let our old man, as their old men died, let our old man die and become as children and follow Joshua into that promise. Shabbat Shalom. One last thing that I wanted to remind you that goes along with this Torah portion. Don't go gathering any sticks. Thank you 
for watching a teaching from Amet HaTorah. If you are ever in the Odessa area, we would love to welcome you to our Shabbat service, 11 a.m. every Sabbath. For more information or for more teachings, feel free to find us on the web, www.amethatoraodessa.com. Also, you can find us on Facebook. Thank you. God bless you and your family. Shalom.